Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to provide you with an update as to what's happening in the Russian economy, and specifically to talk further about the ban on the export of all refined products that Russia introduced on the 21st of September. Now, this ban was initially meant to be for a temporary period, a matter of days. But as at the time of making this video, we are 15 days on into that ban. And this really represents the major problems that are happening in the Russian economy right now, because Russia is one of the world's largest exporters of fuel. That is the bedrock of the Russian economy. So the fact that Russia have announced a self-imposed ban on the export of fuel because they're running short in their home market tells us that the Russian economy is currently in a complete state of disarray. This should not be happening. Russia should have more fuel in its home market than it knows what to do with. But because of rising prices and shortages at the key harvest time, they've now introduced this ban. So in today's episode, we'll go through the details of why this ban has been introduced and what the financial implications are on Russia of the lost income and also the knock-on implications in terms of the refineries that have been closed and what risks there are in terms of the oil that's now building up in Russia because Russia doesn't have any storage capability. So if this export ban on refined products does carry on, there's going to be major implications for the refineries and also the volume of oil that Russia is handling. We'll then have a detailed look at the breakdown of Russia's current revenue that it's earned from all of its fossil fuel sales and talk about the implications of this ban. I'll then share with you a really interesting chart which shows the destination of refined Russian oil products over the course of the last 18 months, where they've been exporting it to. And you'll see that there's been some serious shifts in terms of the destinations, obviously because of the sanctions. But there are some really interesting buyers on that list that tells us a few things about the price that Russia has been selling at. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary as to why I think this export ban has been introduced by Russia and what the longer term implications of this are for the Russian economy. But before we get started on all of that, once again, thank you so much for the great comments that you've been leaving me recently. Really appreciate all of that. And if you'd like to see more face-to-face -face videos like this that are not being posted on YouTube and also avoid all of the adverts that you see in my videos, then please check out my Patreon channel. However, if you don't like Patreon and you'd like to support the channel, please have a look below where you'll find links to buymeacoffee.com as well as YouTube super thanks and membership scheme. On the 21st of September, Russia announced a ban on the export of all refined oil products, which was deemed to be for a temporary period. Now, at that time, no information was given by the Russian authorities as to what a temporary period would constitute. But a lot of market commentators thought that it would last for somewhere between seven to 10 days. Now, at the time of making this video, we are 15 days into that ban. On the 25th of September, Russia did announce that it was lifting the ban in respect of gas oils and bunker fuel. However, this represents a very small percentage of Russia's exports and the market. And there has recently been an article in the Daily Commerçant, a Russian newspaper, which reported that the ban may be lifted on pipeline exports of diesel, but that those volumes will be subject to quotas to avoid surges in wholesale prices. That article also indicated that if Russia does lift its export ban, then it may also introduce quotas on gasoline and diesel to avoid impacting on prices. So as it sits at the moment, we don't know when this ban is going to be lifted. And the question here really is, how did Russia get itself into this situation? Because it has some of the largest oil reserves in the world. So there's no shortage of oil under the ground. And it's actually one of the largest exporters of oil also. So it's pulling lots and lots of oil out of the ground. It's also got 44 mega refineries. So it's got the capability of refining huge volumes of oil. And when you look at the history, Russia is exporting around 2.75 million barrels of refined oil every single day. So the infrastructure is in place. So it seems absolutely ludicrous that they've now got a shortage in their home market, so much so that they've had to ban the export of all products. Now, if this was a company and you were the chief executive and you had to announce to your investors and shareholders that you are actually stopping selling your main product because you'd got a little bit mixed up in terms of how you were managing things, you would be fired overnight. There would be absolutely no coming back from that because it's complete mismanagement. 
So how did Russia find itself in this situation? Well, when you look at the official statements as to why this export ban has been introduced, it's a combination of a reduction in capacity at the refineries, which is put down to annual maintenance. So they're saying that they're having to shut down some of those facilities to clean them up and make sure that they remain operational for the next 12 months. And also a shortage in the home market, which has coincided with the key agricultural harvesting period. Now, the Russian authorities haven't gone into any detail on that. But one of the reasons that there's a shortage in the home market is because of what's been happening with oil prices. This chart shows the movement in the price of Russian crude oil over the course of the last 12 months. And the reason that we're looking at crude oil prices here rather than refined oil prices is that there are so many different refined products, gasoline, diesel, kerosene and various others. And that makes it difficult to be able to look at just one chart to see what's been happening with the price. So if we have a look at the crude oil price, you can see that back in June, a barrel of Russian crude oil was trading for around $54. However, over the course of the following three months, there was a rapid increase in oil prices, which was driven predominantly because OPEC Plus, of which Russia is a member, decided to announce cuts in oil supply. And that meant that even though demand for oil is not currently rising dramatically, we saw a continued increase in the price as a result of constrictions in supply. And by the 20th of September, which was the day before Russia announced its export ban, the price of a barrel of Russian oil was trading for around $81. Now that price still represents a significant discount against Brent crude oil, which was trading for around $93 at that point. But one of the issues from Russia's exports point of view is that that price of $81 represented a very attractive margin compared to what was happening in the Russian market. Russian retail prices for fuel are capped and prices can only increase in line with inflation. And as you can see from this chart, inflation in 2023 has been remarkably low in Russia. 3.5% in February, 2.3% in April, 2.5% in May, 3.3% in June, 4.3% in July and 5.2% currently. So when you take into account the fact that Russian fuel prices can only go up in line with those inflation numbers, the rapid increase in the export price of oil that Russia was selling into the international markets was far higher than it was in the retail markets in Russia and therefore it was much more attractive for the refineries to be exporting large volumes rather than providing fuel to its home market. And I think that really gives us a good understanding as to how these shortages came about because the Russian companies that are refining the oil were making more profit by exporting it rather than selling it in Russia. So now that this ban is in place, all of the refined products that Russia is producing are being kept in the home market. And the problem with that from Russia's point of view is that they may not have demand for all of those products. Things like kerosene, airline fuel really need a global market. It's unlikely that Russia will be able to use all of the airline fuel that's being produced by its refineries. And so there will come a point at some point very soon where Russia is going to be unable to store all of these products. So it will have to lift this export ban at some point, but we may see a sporadic lifting in terms of the different categories as it goes forward. And that's going to represent logistical problems for Russia because they're going to need to be able to export certain things, but not others. And this could have a really big impact in terms of their income. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the video, there has been some major changes in terms of who's buying Russian refined products over the course of the last 18 months. So let's have a look at those details. This interactive chart shows the destination of Russia's refined oil exports between January 2022 and September 2023. And the scale at the top of this chart goes from zero to 600,000 barrels per day. Now, one of the really interesting things about this analysis is that in February 2022, before the war officially started, the USA was the single biggest buyer of Russian oil products, importing over 360,000 barrels of refined products every single day. And those sales are shown by the black bar at the top of this chart. However, not surprisingly, the USA's imports plummeted after Washington imposed a ban on the import of all Russian oil following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And by March 2022, the biggest importer was the Netherlands, which operates basically as a commercial hub. So it isn't using those refined products itself in its home market. It's merely selling them on. And there was also a significant increase in exports to Greece. 
Now, interestingly, in April 2022, the volume of exports to countries in Europe started to reduce as sanctions were imposed. And one of the interesting things about this chart is the rapid increase in the volume of refined products being exported to the United Arab Emirates, which is the dark red bar. Now, that may seem counterintuitive because the UAE obviously has its own oil supplies. However, Russian oil at that point was so cheap that the UAE was buying in refined products and exporting its own to other markets. The UAE also has large bunkering hubs, so it's able to store that fuel with a view to either using it or selling it on later. Now, by June 2022, Greece became the largest destination for Russian products as the country operates as a hub for transshipments via ship-to-ship -ship transfers. So once again, Greece wasn't buying all of this fuel to use in its home market, it was merely selling it on. Now, through the summer period, you can see new relationships that Russia was forming with Turkey, Malaysia, India and China all of which are shown with green bar charts. And the exports to European markets, which are shown in orange, start to diminish. And by September 2022, Turkey, the UAE and Malaysia were three of the top four buyers of Russian fuel. And the volume of refined products being sold to India and China also started to increase significantly. Now, the ban on the purchase of refined products by the European Union was not introduced until the 5th of February 2023. So during this period, European countries were able to buy Russian refined products. And you can see that Greece and the Netherlands, which are operating as hubs, both continued to buy large volumes. In November 2022, Turkey became the single largest buyer of Russian refined products. And towards the end of 2022, as the European ban got closer, some European countries took the opportunity to buy last-minute bargains of Russian oil. But as we move into 2023, you can see that the destination of Russian exports is dominated predominantly by Asia, Turkey, China, Malaysia, India and Singapore. And also the United Arab Emirates was a big buyer. And you can see that Saudi Arabia also started buying refined products for the same reason as the UAE. They were trading at a discount and therefore represented a good buying opportunity. The European ban came into effect on the 5th of February, so you can see that Greece's purchases reduced significantly after that ban. And interestingly, Brazil, which is shown in black, started to buy large quantities of refined Russian products. Turkey continued this position as the largest single buyer, China was briefly number two, however, it was subsequently overtaken by the UAE and Saudi Arabia, who continued seeing Russian oil as attractive in terms of its price. India and Malaysia have both increased their purchases over the course of the last few months. And by July 2023, Brazil had become the second largest purchaser of Russian refined fuel. However, by August, it was displaced by India and China became the third largest buyer. But in terms of volumes, Turkey was by far the largest buyer. However, India's purchases have increased significantly in September and Singapore is now the third largest buyer. This chart shows the total income that Russia is earning from fossil fuel sales dating back to January 2022. And the scale on the left-hand side of this chart is measured in millions of euros per day, starts at zero at the bottom and goes up to 1.5 billion euros at the top. And if we look at the coloured sections of these bar charts, starting at the bottom, the purple section represents crude oil that's sold via ships over the sea. The lilac section above it represents oil that's sold via pipelines. The red section in the middle represents refined products. Now, this is what we're talking about in terms of this ban. The orange section above that represents gas that's sold via pipelines. The beige section above that represents liquefied natural gas. We then have a very thin red section that is hardly visible, which is liquefied petroleum gas. And the black section at the top represents coal. And the overall summary of this chart is that in January 2022, before Russia decided to invade Ukraine, it was earning more than 1 billion euros per day from the sale of all of its fossil fuels. Income levels actually peaked in March 2022, predominantly as a result of the spike in oil prices when they hit the equivalent of $1.5 billion. And since that time, Russia has seen a significant fall in the level of its income. And in August 2023, total income earned from fossil fuel sales was around $750 million per day. And you can see that the biggest single contributor to the reduction in Russia's income has been the loss of the pipeline gas. This was the gas that was being supplied predominantly to Europe through pipelines that Russia had built over the course of the last 30 years. However, most of those countries are no longer buying that gas. But if we now focus in on the red section of this chart, which relates to the refined products, 
you can see that the income that Russia has been earning from the sale of refined products has been pretty consistent over the course of the last 18 months. And prior to the export ban being introduced, Russia was earning around 250 million euros per day, which equates to around 275 million dollars. So that means that the self-imposed ban that Russia has announced is costing it almost two billion dollars per week in terms of lost revenue. And so far in the 15 days as at the date of making this video that the ban has been in place, Russia has lost over 4.1 billion dollars of revenue. But actually when you take a step back and look at the bigger picture, the situation is far worse than that because the refineries are currently operating at very low levels because they're not exporting large volumes. And so all of the people who are working in those refineries, there's a question as to who's paying the cost for all of those people. Plus, when you have a refinery network, there is a huge fixed cost element. The oil and gas industry is really geared up to be operating 24 seven, maximum capacity. That's how you get your profit margins because there are very high fixed costs. When you close a facility down or reduce the volume of oil that's moving through it, it makes things much more expensive. So the last thing that Russia wants to do right now is to reduce the volume of product that it's handling because that's going to increase its net costs and therefore reduce its profitability. So the fact that Russia has imposed this export ban is putting huge pressure on the whole infrastructure that Russia has set up. And at some point soon, if it doesn't reinstate these exports, it's going to start having production problems at the oil wells because it can't keep drawing out millions of barrels of oil if it doesn't have anywhere to send them to because Russia doesn't have the storage capability. So that means that there is a risk that Russia may have to constrict its extraction. And if it does that, that could cause it further problems down the road because problems may be encountered trying to reopen all of that flow. And as I've discussed many times before, Russia has cut its relations with majors such as BP, ExxonMobil and Shell who have huge expertise and also the latest technology to be able to handle any problems. So there is a real risk here that Russia imposing this export ban could cause the whole industry to have serious issues. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video really to give you an update on what's going on with the export ban that Russia introduced on the 21st of September. And as I've said a number of times in this video, it does seem ridiculous that Russia have got to this situation because they've got so much oil and it's their biggest single source of income. So you would think that they would protect this business at all costs. So the fact that they've announced this export ban tells us that there are some serious problems in Russia right now. The shortages that have been experienced over the course of the last couple of months and the pressure on prices really tells us that the logistics in Russia aren't working. Nobody's taking an overview and managing this situation to make sure that the home market is being served and that the exports are being preserved. We've got a complete mess right now. And I'm absolutely sure that President Putin is furious about this situation because Russia currently needs as much income as possible to fix its economy. So the last position that Russia wanted to find themselves in was having to announce a self-imposed ban on the export of its most valuable product. That is a definition of shooting yourself in the foot. And the Russian authorities haven't really provided a very good explanation as to why this has happened. But as we've seen from the analysis that we've been through today, the predominant factor has been the rapid increase in the price of oil, which meant that from a refinery point of view, it was more attractive to export as much oil as possible rather than supplying the home market. And it got to the point where the home market had shortages and that came at a critical time in terms of it's the harvest period. And agriculture remains a really important part of the Russian economy. Firstly, obviously to feed the Russian people, they need food. And secondly, they make a lot of money from exporting the surpluses. So the last thing that Russia wanted to do was miss the harvest because they didn't have enough fuel. So they've now had to divert all of these refined products into the home market to make sure that the farmers and everybody else have enough fuel and that's causing the economy to miss out on this valuable period of income. And as we saw from the oil price charts, over the course of the last couple of weeks, oil prices have spiked and have started falling again, despite the fact that OPEC Plus have announced their recent round of cuts. 
and this is because the global economy is still slowing down. Demand from large economies such as the USA and China is lower than it was this time last year and as we know from simple economics, if demand falls and supply stays the same, then prices will come down. And that's what's happening with oil prices right now. And this represents another problem for Russia because they've missed out on a bumper period. The export ban actually came in as prices were still rising. So they missed out on some extra profits during that period. And if the ban goes on for another few weeks or maybe even another couple of months, Russia may find itself in a situation where it lifts its export ban at a time when prices have fallen considerably. So that means that they will make even less profit because they'll be selling their oil for a lower price than they could have sold it over the course of the last few weeks. And as we saw from the data before this ban was introduced, Russia was earning around $275 million per day from the sale of refined products. That represents around $2 billion of income per week. And so far this ban has cost Russia more than $4 billion. Now, in terms of the best guess as to when this ban will be fully lifted, JP Morgan has said that they expect the ban to be lifted partially at some point over the next couple of weeks. However, other industry experts have said that it could remain in place to the end of October or even the end of November, depending on how the harvest period goes. And every single day, this is costing Russia more and more cash at a time when it's already on its knees in terms of the deficits that Russia have been posting. In 2022, the economy lost $47 billion and the losses in the first eight months of 2023 are considerably higher than they were last year. So the full year outlook at the moment for Russia is that it's likely that they're going to post another deficit of somewhere in the region of $50 billion. However, the longer that this ban remains in place, the more likely it is that that deficit is going to rise further. And Russia has been funding its deficit from its National Wealth Fund, and that had around $150 billion in it at the start of 2022. Now, they've had to take $47 billion out to fund last year's losses. This year, if they're taking another 50 out, that would leave Russia with only $50 billion left, which would mean that at the current burn rate, Russia could run out of cash by the end of 2024. So this really does represent a serious problem from Russia's perspective. So the overall summary of today's video is that the ban on the export of refined oil products tells us that there are serious problems occurring right now in Russia, not just from an economic point of view, but also from an operational point of view. When you're having to actually ban the export of your most valuable product, that tells everybody that you've got things wrong. You haven't been managing your situation well and you've really caused yourselves major problems. And the longer that this situation goes on, the worse it is going to get from a Russian point of view at a time when they're already struggling financially. And I think it will be fascinating to see what unfolds over the course of the next few weeks. I'm sure we will see elements of this ban being lifted as soon as possible. But in order to sort out its financial problems, Russia needs to completely lift this ban and get back to full operation in terms of its output of oil and refined products. So I'll keep you posted on any further news and developments on this and related stories. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. And here's something to put a smile on your face.